Jadi kalau lu ngomong baik, bakal keren. Oke. Okay. <laughs> Gue takut orang nendang. Kalau orang lewat dari sana ke sini. Lu lah yang pukulin. Bentar, gue juga belum tahu. Gak kan serame itu ya? Gue ingat, gue ingat. Max, Max ready. Huh? I also have. Deh. Deh cuyen. You don't want to see cuyen do right. the backup it will be it will stay here so when you speak right you can actually it can still listen to you okay maybe i close it a bit
quits for you. Let's give us a hand setting up the wireless mics. I think they prefer to... Um, one of them seems to be low battery, the other one is super loud. Um, okay, thank you. Testing, testing. Oh, oh the wireless.
Somebody stole my podium, so I'm just going to stand in the middle. Um, so, hi everyone. Um, thank you for coming again to this evening's lecture. It's my very great pleasure tonight to introduce two of Singapore's great designers, um, Sunny Chan of CSYA and Dr. Hossein Razai Jarabi of Web Structures. Um, tonight's theme is collaboration. And when thinking of this subject, no one comes more to mind than these two individuals who've maintained one of the most strikingly successful collaborative partnerships that I've seen. As architect and engineer, they've worked together to design daring and elegant buildings uh, and to realize them. I've been lucky to be a part of a few of these projects myself, and I've been struck considering how tricky the art of the successful design collaboration can be and how well their partnership works. It's a process where the full potentials of architecture and engineering can be explored because they're intensively integrated from the very beginning of the design process. While a lot of lip service is currently paid to the idea of collaboration, very often this refers merely to a professional division of labor. It's much less common to see design conversations that begin at conception with architects and engineers sitting around a table covered with trace paper developing a scheme that represents the forefront of both disciplines. Moreover, where the design party emerges through this conversation, preceding specific conversations about form, about material, or about organization. Yet, this is exactly how Sunny and Dr. Hussain's scheme for the National Gallery in Singapore, for example, was designed. A slow, patient process, accumulating layers of sketches and hours of conversation until the project took specific shape. So it's a great opportunity this evening to hear about other recent projects from their practices and to have a moment to discuss their work together and separately. So a little background information about our speakers tonight. Sunny Chan began studying architecture after boarding school in the UK, first at Northern Polytechnic in London and again in 1963 when he applied to the Architectural Association School of Architecture for the course in Tropical Studies. He joined Kampulan Architect in 1964 and continued to develop his career concerns for climate, culture, and technology. In 1993, he founded his present practice under Chan Soyan Associates, CSYA. At CSYA, he began experimenting with designing tropical high-rises, beginning with the submission of a competition entry for the design of Maybank headquarters in Singapore in 1998. Though unsuccessful, it served to inform the design for his later Tokyo Marine Center in 2007, which I hope we'll see a little bit of tonight. Sunny's work has been featured in a broad range of publications, both digital and print, in Singapore and internationally. He's the winner of the President's Design Award for Designer of the Year in 2010, as well as numerous URA Architectural Heritage Awards, SIA Awards, as well as honors from BCA, PAM, World Architecture Festival, and numerous others. While he adapts his designs for climate, culture, and technology, Mr. Chan believes that architecture should be honest, staying true to his educational modernist roots. He says, what we try to see through is the complexity of the pro yeah, sorry, excuse me, is the complexity of the problem and seek a simple solution. We like to express materials in their natural state. Dr. Hossein Razai Jarabi is a structural engineer based in Singapore. He's the founding principal and director of Web Structures, a multidisciplinary international design engineering firm. He received his PhD from the University of Westminster in 1985 on the subject of reinforced and pre-stressed concrete structures and also worked there as a research assistant and fellow. He's written and presented several technical papers and has lectured at the University of Westminster, Politecnico di Milano, National University of Singapore, Victoria and Albert Museum, and the Institution of Civil Engineers. His works have been published in newspapers, international architecture magazines, and books, including the Institution of Structural Engineers magazine and the Architects Journal. Dr. Hossein's work with Web Structures has received many awards, including the Reba Award for International Excellence in 2012 for the Troika in Kuala Lumpur, the 14th SIA Architectural Design Award 2014 for the National Design Center, and the ISE Structural, Singapore Structural Award 2016 for the MediaCorp campus building. Web Structures projects have been featured in The Telegraph, The Straits Times, Financial Times, Forbes, Dezine, and elsewhere. Dr. Hussain was part of the Master Jury for the 2016 Aga Khan Award for Architecture, being the first Singapore professional to be on the jury. And at 2016, he won the President's Design Award in the category of Designer of the Year. He's the first, I think still only, engineer to have won this award. So please join me tonight in welcoming our two guest speakers, Sunny Chan and Dr. Hussain Razai Jarabi, speaking with us.
My first husband, my first. Architectural commission was for my mother's house when I was in my fourth year of architecture. It came at the end. Hello. 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 Mute. Why was my camera? Can you mute me? Just press. 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 Is that better now? Yeah, I think so. So. It gave me an opportunity to test out my ideas of tropical living based on my observations of the Malay Kampong house on silk and the black and white colonial house with white overhanging roof deep and verandas, adjustable timber lower shutters for rain and sun protection and natural ventilation. Here's a courtyard house raised above ground with the sheltered undercroft for additional living. The whole house is enclosed by full height operable timber roof structures. My next exploration into tropical architecture was my final year thesis for a Chinese fishing community in silks over coastal waters. This is based on my research of an existing thriving community of 10,000, which is such sufficient. The, the coastal tide and sea air pro provided a sewer-free and healthy environment. My thesis proposition to the authorities was that this is a sustainable model and need not be resettled. Instead, the reclaimed land could be used for agriculture to provide a dual economy for the fishing community. The architecture was restricted to timber frame construction and cement board for roofing, wall and window paneling, which could be self-built. Today, Gulag Katam still exists, but less the fishing community. This pamphlet was prepared to counter some of our clients' requests for house designs which were inappropriate in our tropical climate, culture, no technology. We engaged them to subscribe to the notion of a Singapore house and look at existing typologies in our building stock, such as the Malay Kampong House, the Chinese and Indian townhouses, and the adaptation of the colonial black and white house in the tropical. Higher Kwantan, completed in 1980, is a beach resort hotel catering to a clientele in search of sun, sea, and sand. It offered an ideal opportunity to demonstrate design for living in the tropics, which is climatically mild and with no extreme temperatures throughout the year. We sought inspiration in 
from the vernacular architecture of the colonial rest houses, which in turn were adaptations, adaptations of the Mene Kampong house and stilts, and reinterpreted it in a modernistic syntax. The RC concrete frame is timber board marks, shuttering, and left fair face. The pitch roofs are local terracotta tiles with exposed timber trusses, purlins, and rafters. Except for the guest rooms, the public and circulation areas are open for natural pot ventilation. RC planters are integrated to the structure for vertical green of the building. Shortly after the completion of Hyatt Pantan, we received this commission for rental offices in Kuala Lumpur. We took advantage of the substantial area of 10,000 square meters and proposed a group form development comprising of four quadrant shaped blocks of similar footprint, three of which are offices and the fourth is amenities for a cafe, restaurant, health club and spa for the inhabitants. A fifth block houses the m and &E plant and building maintenance. The four blocks are varying heights and circled an open-air courtyard with a central fountain forming an inviting urban plaza and is a welcome respite for the office workers during their breaks. The separate blocks could also be marketed to major tenants with naming rights as an added rental incentive. The reflective glass cladding was a commercial decision as it was the most efficacious option at that time to long-term cleaning maintenance. Even to today, the property is in pristine condition. This was when I met Dr. Hussein for the first time to John here, whom we collaborated with in the Singtel Sport Canning Competition. It has been a 25 year period of, of, of collaboration with the band. This is the mixed use development comprising of an office component for the landowner, a hotel and office suite for sale by the developer in a joint venture. The individual needs and priorities of each component on the 7,000 square meter site was daunting. This was resolved with a mega structure by placing the office in the front, the office suite, office suites in the back, and the hotel in between. Office building, hotel, and office suite. An atrium, an atrium rising right full height of the building organizes the planning of the hotel and office suites. It also provides natural lighting and ventilation for the, for the hotel and office suites internal corridors. The office has direct entry on the ground floor. For the hotel, sorry. The office has direct entry on the ground floor in front, whereas the office suite's entrance is on the ground floor behind. The hotel entry is ramped up one story above, arriving in the, in the uh, middle of the atrium hall. The superstructure and services are terminated by a transfer slant supported by three light columns.
superstructure and services are terminated by a transfer slab supported by three light columns which are featured in the architectural space and in zero space. Three light columns. Eight years later, we were commissioned to undertake the complete renovation of the hotel. We reduced the number of keys from 300 to 200 by creating more two-bay streets. We took advantage of the voluminous spatial qualities of the original architecture, which was not potential.